Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Seventh Day Church of Revelation. Did Jesus have to endure the same sufferings that we endure? Loneliness, betrayal, temptation? To begin, we will go to the book of Romans. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. He took our nature, our sinful nature, so that he could redeem us in the same state that we are found. Now we're going to look also in the book of Matthew and chapter one, and it says the book of generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And there is a list of his ancestry. And it goes all the way down to verse number 17. And it says, So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. So we see how many generations have transpire all the way to Jesus' incarnation. Also in the book of Luke, we find another list of his earthly ancestry. In the book of Luke chapter 3, verse 23, And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Eli. And you go down a list once again, different names, And we go down to verse 38, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Now, there are two theories, and I'm going to read the most popular one, the most accepted one, of why there is two lists of Jesus' genealogy. Another and more widely accepted theory is that Matthew gives Joseph's genealogy and Luke that of Mary. This view makes Joseph the son-in-law and Jesus the grandson of Eli, who, according to the Talmud, was Mary's father. This includes Christ in the royal line of David in two ways, legally through Mary's marriage with Joseph and naturally through Mary herself being a member of the royal family. Now, I would like to read a quote from Mrs. White. It would have been an almost infinite humiliation for the Son of God to take man's nature, even when Adam stood in his innocence in Eden. But Jesus accepted humanity when the race had been weakened by 4,000 years of sin. Like every child of Adam, he accepted the results of the working of the great law of heredity. What these results were is shown in the history of his earthly ancestors. He came with such a heredity to share our sorrows and temptations and to give us the example of a sinless life. So this is very clear. It gives us the reason why he took of this law of heredity. Just like every human being, we receive a trait of our parents or grandparents or great-grandparents. But some of us are so weak we cannot control them. But it was not the case for Jesus. Let us go to Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, we see a record of John the Baptist about his parents, how they were pure. They were obedient to the laws of God. We also see another Example of Jeremiah. Both Jeremiah and John the Baptist were set apart even from the womb of their mother. Now we also see that John the Baptist, he had a special diet. Now this did not even change for Jesus. He also had to have a special diet. And for what reason? Well, let us see what the scripture says. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. 
Here we see the reasons why Jesus had a special diet. And many today do not believe that having a special diet can help a person develop or uh, change to a good character. Let us continue to read. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Those who have dedicated their little ones to God receive a message of hope and encouragement. Uh, when Mary presented Jesus as it was custom according to the law, she receives the blessing but also receives the news of how Jesus was to suffer. Now, after this dedication also, um, both the parents receive a vision from an angel that they were to flee, flee the country. Let us read. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. What happened after Herod passed away? And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Uh, we read the definition of this Greek word. It is to empower, that is passively, increase in vigor, be strengthened, be waxed strong. This is a process we all go through. We all go through a, a learning stage. None of us are born knowing. Um, this is the same situation for Jesus. He came being God, Emmanuel, God with us. He still had to learn everything that he taught the prophets. He spoke to the prophets. Now Jesus had to learn that uh, through his mother. Let us continue to read. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. So where was Jesus uh, before attending the feast? The child Jesus did not receive instructions in the synagogue schools. His mother was his first human teacher. From her lips and from the scrolls of the prophets, he learned of heavenly things. The very words which he himself has spoken to Moses for Israel, he was now taught at his mother's knee. As he advanced from childhood to youth, he did not seek the schools of the rabbis. He needed not the education to be obtained from such sources, for God was his instructor. From its earliest years, the Jewish child was surrounded with the requirements of the rabbis. Rigid rules were prescribed for every act, down to the smallest details of life. Under the synagogue teachers, the youth were instructed in the countless regulations which as Orthodox Israelites were expected to observe. But Jesus did not interest himself in these matters. From childhood, he acted independently of the rabbinical laws. The scripture of the Old Testament were his constant study, and the words, Thus saith the Lord, were ever upon his lips. Now there came a point where Jesus, after he was being instructed, he went to the feast. And as their parents were headed back home, they forgot about him. But he went to the synagogue or he went to the rabbis and he started to question. The scripture says, And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. This is something we don't see often today. We don't see a 12-year-old uh, go to uh, a university, 
Andrews or Loma Linda and sit down with the teachers and raise questions. And I would say we probably have not seen this. But it is interesting why Jesus did this. He received a good education. He received the, the lessons of, from his mother's knees, sitting right next to her. He learned all that he needed to learn. Because at that time, the rabbinical schools or the uh, school of the prophets were not as they should be. So his education was better off staying home and listening the good lessons from his mother. Let us continue to read. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So Jesus continued to increase in wisdom. He was not stagnant. He was not satisfied. Just like we should not be. We should continue to advance acknowledgement of the scriptures. Now, there came a time in Jesus' life where he lost his father. What happened to him? Did he miss that father figure in the house? Joseph was dead, and she had no one in whom to confide the cherished thoughts of her heart. She had fluctuated between hope and perplexing doubts, but always feeling more or less of an assurance that her son was indeed the promised one. The widowed mother had mourned over the sufferings that Jesus had endured in his loneliness. Many of us that have uh, lost our parent, our father or mother, we go through some situations where we miss them. We, we feel loneliness. We miss hearing their, their counsels and spending the good times. And we, we feel lonely. We feel down. Jesus went through the same experience. He was human. She says the following. The Son of God in His humanity wrestled with the very same fierce, apparently overwhelming temptations that assail men. Temptations to indulgence of appetite, to presumptions of venturing where God has not led them, and to the worship of the God of this world to sacrifice an eternity of bliss for the fascinating pleasures of this life. Temptations that every man goes through. Men and women, we all go through the same temptations. Indulgence of appetite. We can't stop eating. We fall and we just continue to eat. But Jesus, he felt the same pulling, but he did not fall in this temptation. You have a pulling to probably go to a place you know you very well should not go. He had the same uh, pulling, but he did not fall. When Lucifer took him to the highest part and offered him everything, as long as he was going to worship Satan, he would give him all of that. But he did not fall. And as Jesus continued his journey in this life, going to the synagogue as it was his custom to go Sabbath after Sabbath, his knowledge in the truth continued to increase, increase. And at one point, he wanted to share this with his brethren. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. Some of us have probably shared truths that were contrary to the church we go to or had gone to before. And we either had a visit from the pastor or the elder and telling us that what we were teaching was contrary to what they usually teach. Now, Jesus' experience that we just read was not so. They tried to kill him. So at one point, Jesus, he had to turn away. He, had, he was forced and take this message to those who were willing to listen to the message. We read the following. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. 
Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother, and whom are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. So after a, a long period of time when Jesus was going to the synagogue, he was forced to flee to a different kind of group that were willing to listen to his message. Now there were only a few. And many of us must go through this experience when we share the truth for so long and they are not willing to listen to the truth or accept the truth, we have no other uh, decision to make than the same that Jesus made. To direct this message to those who are willing to listen to the truth. We're going to read the next experience of Jesus. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit, and was troubled, and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Many of us, we receive these kind of words. Where were you? Where were you when uh, we needed you? Some say, where was God when I needed Him? They have um, forgot about how He performed the miracles, gave sight to the blind man. And many of us go through this experience and we feel sad and Jesus was sad. That's why He cried. He wept. And we know what happened. Uh, Lazarus, he was resurrected by Jesus. He came out and the people were in awe. But even through all this, in the sadness and the way he was treated, where did he find his, his refuge? Where did he find his comfort? We read, And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Another text says, And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone in prayer with his father this is where he found his refuge his comfort and his strength that is where we ought to find our comfort our refuge and strength see jesus's life his experience must be the same as ours what we go through let us continue to see what sister white says he was filled with divine wisdom and through the study of nature and by meditation upon the communion with God, his spiritual powers were strengthened. Yes, his spiritual powers had to be strengthened. That is why we, every day, we should recharge our spirit with the Spirit of God, his Word. We must be recharged. And look at Jesus being the Son of God, coming here. He had to be strengthened by his Father. This is the life and experience we must uh, understand of Jesus. For we have not a high priest, which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Jesus found strength through prayer. He came to his Father, and that is what we ought to do too. 
we need to come to our Heavenly Father in any situation, trials, temptations. We need to come to Him. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemns sin in the flesh. Everything we experience, once again, He went through. He know how weak is the flesh, and that is why He said this to His disciples. And He cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and said unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He knew how strong the temptations were. Everything we go through, he had to go through. He knew how strong and weak were the spirit and the flesh. His strength was in his father. Jesus had to recharge his spiritual strength in communion with his Father. Let us continue to read. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. God sent his Son to take part of our nature. That was the only way he can come and become our Redeemer. We read the following. It was possible for Adam before the fall to form a righteous character by obedience to God's law. But he failed to do this. And because of his sin, our natures are fallen and we cannot make ourselves righteous. Since we are sinful, unholy, we cannot perfectly obey the holy law. We have no righteousness of our own with which to meet the claims of the law of God. But Christ has made a way of escape for us. He lived on earth amid trials and temptations such as we have to meet. He lived a sinless life. He died for us and now he offers to take our sins and give us his righteousness. In order for Jesus to become our Redeemer, He had to come and share the same temptations that we all go through. But He did not fall. He knows the pullings. And that is why He can tell us how to overcome. Because He did not fall. His strength was from the Father. His communion with the Father. Prayer with the Father. Setting a time apart to have fellowship with His Father. That is what we ought to do. Let us continue to read. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Adam fell. He did not perfect his character. He had the chance, but he fell. Jesus had to come not in Adam's sinless nature now, he had to come in our sinful nature. And he overcame. He was triumphant over every temptation. And that is why he is our perfect Redeemer. Let us continue to read. Jesus was sinless and had no dread of the consequences of sin. With this exception, his condition was as yours. You have not a difficulty that did not press with equal weight upon him, not a sorrow that his heart has not experienced. His feelings could be hurt with neglect, with indifference of professed friends, as easily as yours. Is your path thorny? Christ was so in a tenfold sense. Are you distressed? So was he. How well fitted was Christ to be an example. This was the only way. Go through what everyone goes through. This is why He is our perfect Redeemer. And this is the character He wants to give us. A character of a person who was a conqueror. We read the following. This robe, woven in the loom of heaven, 
has in it not one thread of human devising. Christ in his humanity wrought out a perfect character, and this character he offers to impart to us. All our righteousness are as filthy rags, Isaiah 64, 6. Everything that we of ourselves can do is defiled by sin. But the Son of God was manifested to take away our sins, and in Him is no sin. Sin is defined to be the transgression of the law. That's why Him taking our sinful nature is not a sin in itself. He had to yield to temptation to break the law. He had to make a decision. That is why He is our perfect example. He came and showed us what a human man can do if he's grabbing hold of the power of the Spirit of God. He is our greatest example. He led the example, and we must follow it. But Christ was obedient to every requirement of the law. Every requirement. He said of himself, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Psalms 40 verse 8. When on earth he said to his disciples, I have kept my father's commandments. John 15 10. By his perfect obedience, he has made it possible for every human being to obey God's commandments. How is this possible? By taking part of his divine nature. Just like Jesus, he had to come and partake of our sinful nature, but not yielding to sin. We have now the opportunity to take part of his divine nature. We have hope and all things and be glory to Jesus Christ. And how did he do it? By having fellowship with his Father. He had to recharge his spiritual powers every day, and we ought to do the same. We talk of the Holy Ghost. We preach of the Holy Ghost. But we need to understand better what the office of the Holy Ghost is. This is why it is important to know who the Spirit Holy Spirit is. See, when we receive the Holy Spirit, we're not receiving the Spirit of someone who has not experienced what a human goes through. The Spirit we want is that of Jesus Christ. That is why she says that the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ. She says, it is not safe to catch the Spirit from another. We want the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus Christ. If we commune with God, we shall have strength and grace and efficiency. Remember, the character that Christ wants to give us is the one He developed here on earth, an overcomer, someone who did not yield to temptation. Even though partaking of our nature, He did not yield. She says the following, All professions of Christianity are but lifeless expressions of faith. Until Jesus imbues the believer with his spiritual life, which is the Holy Ghost. That is why we need to know and understand who the Spirit is. We want the Spirit of a man that was victorious, who did not yield to temptation. See, if we pray for a Spirit that did not endure our temptations and trials and felt the pullings, how can He be our Redeemer and, and be able to succor us if He doesn't know how to do it? Jesus does. And He went through it and did not yield to temptation. The life and experience of Jesus Christ is a promise for us, and it still stands today. If our parents uh, instruct us in God's path, in God's way, there is a promise. See, God is not only a savior for an adult or a youth. He is a savior of the baby if the parent dedicates his life to God. God listens to the prayers of a parent. The parent has a big role to play in the development and character of the little one. We read the following. If before the birth of her child she is self-indulgent, if she is selfish, impatient, and exacting, these traits will be reflected 
in the disposition of the child. Thus many children have received as a birthright almost unconquerable tendencies of evil. But if the mother unswervingly adheres to right principles, if she is temperate and self-denying, if she is kind, gentle, and unselfish, she may give her child these same precious traits of character. The basis of a right character in the future man is made firm by habits of strict temperance in the mother prior to the birth of her child. This lesson should not be regarded with indifference. Parents who indulge in excess of eating and drinking or in the gratification of the animal propensities transmit their corrupted blood and vitiated appetites to their children who have less self-control and less power to resist temptation than the parents have. Many children die in infancy, while many more are ruined for time and eternity. In consequence of the sinful indulgence of the parents, the thoughts and feelings of the mother will also have a powerful influence upon the legacy she gives her child. Strong traits of character as well as perverted appetites are transmitted from parents to children. Thus many have received as a birthright almost unconquerable tendencies to evil. So the reason why today's society is weakened is because of what the parents have done. We have testimonies in the scriptures and the spirit of prophecy of what a man could do holding on to God to be able to help their little ones develop a good character. The problem is not the nature itself. The problem is us not grabbing hold to the promises of God, not living the life and the experience of Jesus Christ. He has left us an example, and we've all failed. But he says, come, let us reason together. We come to him. We present to him our faults. We ask for forgiveness. And he's willing to make us new. All we got to do is just grab hold of the promises. And Jesus, he said this to his church. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in His throne. Let us grab hold to this promise. He can make us new again. He is able to forgive, but probation is soon to close. Let us come and reason with Him. He will listen to us and He will help us. Help us as parents and help the little ones. All we need to have is a disposition to listen and obey. If you've been blessed by this video, please like, subscribe, and comment below. To support Seventh-day Church of Revelation, visit revelation.org.